All right, my friends, Nidarians are next. The branch that gave rise to uh, our friends, the sponges, the other end of the branch got tissues. And the first critter that's branching off of our tissue group, they're called Nidarians, but let's just go ahead and glump them together under jellyfish. There are other critters like sea anemones that are in this mix, but jellyfish are the first group that have tissues that are working together. So let's look at, here is some jellyfish. They're in the phylum Nidaria, and that's because all Nidarians have, in addition to having tissues, fantastic, Nidarians have a cellular organelle that is literally mind-blowing. These things, now, these are inside cells, and these are organelles, and they're called nidocytes. Nido, Nidarians, nidocytes. And it's like a ribosome, except it's a poisoned arrow with barbs on the arrow and a thread attaching to the arrow so that you can shoot this barbed arrow that has poison on the end of it out and attack somebody, and not only attack them, but reel them back in. What? What? I mean, okay, do you want to go out and go swimming and, like, meet up with the jellyfish? I don't think so. And because you're going to get the holy heck and heck stung out of you if you meet up with a jellyfish. Why? Because they're shooting poison barbed arrows into your body, and the poison is poisoning you, and the arrows are pulling you in and making you stick to them. Sea anemones. If you've ever gone to a tide pool and touched gently and lovingly and respectfully touched a sea anemone, it sticks to your finger. Why? Because they shot all their poisoned, barbed, ring hung on to arrows into your finger and they stuck. And those arrows are like pulling you back in so that the sea anemone can yuptialize your finger. What? Now, the poison, when you touch it with your finger, your finger is pretty thick skin. And so the poison doesn't get in and you're in good position. However, I have heard from a reliable source about a young lad who went to the tide pools and said, why? Why would any human do this? I don't know. I don't know. But they decided to stick a more sensitive body part into the sea anemone. Don't be thinking that. They put their tongue into the sea anemone, and then their tongue is a little more sensitive to the poison that's in the sea anemone, and indeed the, all the barbs came out, all the nidocytes shot their arrows into the kid's tongue, and then his tongue, like, swelled, swolled, got real swollen, and, like, he had to go to the hospital. He had a total anaphylactic shock reaction. Swollen tongue could hardly breathe because his tongue got so huge. The take-home message is don't eat, like, don't stick your tongue into sea anemones because it's more, you can stick your finger in, but that's it. Don't stick anything else in there. All right, that's because of those awesome poison barbed hook things, daggers. <laughs> okay. Some critters, these guys don't actually make their own nidocytes. So they, this is a mollusk. This is, doesn't it look like a slug? It is. It's a sea slug. And here's another one. And these guys actually will go around and eat anemones and hijack their nematocysts, their nidocytes, and put all those nidocytes on their own backs. So then they get all the poison arrows without, because they ate poisoned arrows, not because they actually were producing them themselves. I personally think the Nidarians are amazing. The next group of critters is our first group that is going to have 
um, we're, we're going to look at the protostome groups next.